Um, we look forward to just providing some high level insights into really beginning to not only de-risk mixed use or residential developments or single use commercial or industrial development, but also to to the family you're tuned into the leading podcast in all your property matters in south africa now this evening we're having a conversation uh, that always excites me i love 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 talking about your know, developer developing um and 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 that just that whole value chain we're looking this evening challenges that uh, property developers typically experience now i was saying to my guests off air that you know when we look at resi projects in particular we as consumers tend to have a lot of things we can complain about um and as we should rightfully so uh, but the reality is, if you have aspirations of being a developer, there are certain challenges that you're going to encounter and want to unpack what some of them are and how you can perhaps even mitigate uh, you know, those, those challenges and maybe even make sure you avoid them as much as possible. And to help us get a good understanding of what they are and ways to work around those challenges, I'm joined this evening by Kim Bullock, who's a National Sales Manager at SBS Group, as well as Michael van, um, van der Mielen, who is an Operations Manager at SBS Group. Kim, Michael, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Good evening. Thank you for having us. It's, it's such a pleasure to have both of you on. I, I think, you know, I, I'm going to start with you, Michael, uh, when we look, especially because you do an operations perspective. I think at the high level, uh, just take us through at a big picture what a developer typically is thinking about when you start, especially uh, resi projects. I mean, you know, we also have commercial projects, but when you're a resi uh, developer, how do you effectively plan your project so that even some of these challenges that we're going to be addressing, you try to minimize them as much as possible throughout the, the project? Um, we look forward to just providing some high level insights into really beginning to not only de-risk mixed use or residential developments or single use commercial or industrial development, but also to understand the broader context of water and energy security, which is so critical for all developers when considering their, their feasibility of their development, as well as ensuring end users continuity of amenity as residential users you are obviously dependent on security of water and energy provision for the life for the for the full lifespan of the asset or the duration that they plan to live in that particular residential community or other non-residential uses be they industrial or commercial uh, as a developer we we're all developing in different contexts and depending on the in the whether whether we whether we're developing in a, a non South African location or we develop it within South Africa, we, we are obviously all developing within a receiving environment of various degrees of operational capacity of water service authorities. And then in the South African context we obviously have ESKIM providing <clears throat> uh, bulk and transmission infrastructure to the various local municipalities and in some instances we have the, the municipalities who are licensed to to on sell electricity such as your larger metros but as everybody's aware right from the north africa right down to where we all reside in south africa both energy as well as water security are increasingly becoming a critical issue that we as developers need to um, consider and we we typically have to, you, as developers, you typically have to consider the, the bulk tie-ins from the, the, the municipal or the, the water service authorities or the, or the national provider of energy, which may be Eskim or whatever country one, one finds himself in. 
and consider ways of beginning to create, create a, me, a measure of, of independence as well as and in, in the South African and African context, water scarcity as well as um, the various opportunities that are available for us through solar and like for energy for energy provision we have to try and embed those into our into our planning design for our single use development or mixed use or single use development such as residential estates um, or even our um, the the higher density developments that we may be considering so it's critical to to make use of legislation that's available um, to consider um, any rebates that are available in your different entities and then right from early planning stages build that the, the capital expenditure that's required for providing energy and water backup and other security um, solutions into our developments and then build up into the content into the into our developments and then offer that as a an amenity advantage to our prospective purchasers who we are going to be marketing to. It's, it's both good business to integrate that into our developments and also for any prospective purchaser, be they residential or non-residential. Mm -hmm. I will just obviously joining... see that as a, a value add and in the yeah, and then medium to long term, there's obviously savings over time once the CapEx portion is paid off. So as, as SBS, what we try and do is work in concert with a developer right from the early stages and then help them plan the integration of water and energy solutions, be it for a freestanding development or for an integrated mixed-use development. I mean, one of the challenges that uh, Michael has actually pointed to, and I want us to look at the, the issue of water security it, and it being a risk factor, especially when you look at pain points with aging municipalities. Uh, I think this is one of those realities where I know some property developers uh, you know, see opportunities in some of those areas that could potentially have aging municipalities. And when municipalities are just not, don't have their finger on the pulse and have a quick turnaround time when it comes to certain matters. Perhaps talk us through, uh, you know, dealing with some of those challenges because we have, we are experiencing a lot of water issues. Some developers end up, you know, building in an area where, let's say it was a, a residential area with just houses and they come in and put in, for instance, apartments and did didn't make the necessary upgrades. And we see this a lot, for instance, in, in townships, and we end up having water issues um, in that particular, you know, township or area uh, because not all the necessary upgrades that needed to to be made to account for the fact that you've now sort of bought, let's say, it's what nearly five thousand square meters, and have you know bought two two stands to build these apartment blocks. You haven't accounted for the fact that the, the infrastructure in that particular street, particularly the water infrastructure, wasn't built for that kind of usage in that space. So how do we then uh, adequately deal with that? Great. Well, thank you for having me this evening. Um, first of all, if I can just um, start by saying that SBS is in the business of food and water security and most recently energy security. And we assist our clients identifying these risks and together through our network of specialists, mitigate this risk. Our purpose as a business is to activate the potential in individuals, businesses and the communities they serve. And we truly believe that by building for better, committing wholeheartedly and working smart, that we can make a vital impact on our people, our country, Africa and the globe at large. So thank you for this opportunity to bring our business to you. It is an absolute fact that South Africa is facing a projected 17% water deficit by the year 2030. This is real. The demand for water will exceed the available supply. The predicted water crisis is caused by an insufficient water infrastructure maintenance and investment drought driven by climate variation, inequalities in access to water and sanitation, deteriorating water quality, and a lack of skilled water engineers. The South African government estimates that upwards of 7 billion is lost annually due to water leaks. So in the absence of timely interventions, the demand for water will exceed the available supply. 
uh, it's our observation that this crisis is already having significant impacts on the economic growth and on the well-being of everyone in South Africa. Industry leaders have seen this as a critical business issue and backup water, in some cases, rainwater harvesting has been a focus to mitigate this risk. I think the question is, is, is what role does water play in the property sector? Is it drinking? Is it production? Is it ablutions? Is it cleaning? Is it risk from a fi fixed fire protection perspective? And I think these are the questions that you need to start asking yourself. Um, one of the, the main concerns around the property sector at the moment is, is aging, municipal in, aging municipal infrastructure. And, and this often results in, in water cuts due to burst pipes. And this has a consequence um, in terms of lost revenue due to operational challenges without water, uh, shake requirements in terms of sending people home due to health and safety concerns. There's a lot of things that are happening um, that can affect businesses. So, yes, the property sector is under a huge amount of strain to try and mitigate this risk, and that's what we do. We see that um, in the sector there's a large movement towards eco-friendly and green buildings, and they're starting to look at rainwater harvesting solutions, uh, solutions to reduce water consumption. Uh, they're looking at cleaner production in terms of wastewater recycling, um, reducing water usage, as well as, as obviously energy solutions. I mean, we've all experienced ESKIM and, and, and the cutting down of electricity and the not being able to function. So a lot of, a lot of property developers are looking at off-the-grid solutions to try and mitigate this risk. And I think SBS has been well positioned to, to assist our, our clients with this. And I, I want to bring, I, and I want to bring you in, actually, Michael, um, when we then look at perhaps some of the energy solutions, and this is something that, uh, you know, Kim has already touched on, uh, energy solutions become so critical, regardless of whether you're developing for, uh, you know, for a residential project or a commercial project. Uh, I think the, the, the various energy challenges that we're facing in South Africa, uh, whether it's, it's power, of course, I think th that's quite a big one right now. Uh, you know, when you look at load shedding and being on the grid, and, and I think the pressure of being on the grid now more than ever with uh, some of the new developments, you need to be able to account for the, the energy challenges that consumers essentially fa um, face and, of course, be able to, to, to be building to that and even perhaps offer that as, as a value to, to consumers who are going to be building it. Perhaps take us through some of the energy solutions um, that are available for property developers. Right, well, I think um, the, the, where, we, where we like to start, which is often the cheapest and lowest barrier to entry, is, is obviously in the solar space where we provide effectively inverters that are only um, really grid tied and help to save a developer on the cost of, of energy over the useful life of the building. And the, so, but that doesn't provide the, the, the backup energy should they lose bulk energy supply. So if one wants to also mitigate and provide business continuity when there is, when there is no um, <clears throat> bulk grid supply, then one obviously has to transition into inverters that have a back battery backup. Obviously, the amount of load that batteries can provide is has to be has to be weighed off against the size and scale of the consumption of a residential or non-residential residential user. And then one can also then tie into co to of, or to complement the the solar and battery storage components with the likes of generators as a more expensive often uh, more expensive more expensive option and obviously not as as clean where, where we all want to go so a, a combine a hybrid solution can be engaged with for your end user and the appropriate solution at the right price point to meet their particular need and the scale of the consumption and the really the the, the desired outcomes that, that a particular property developer or owner would like to see so fortunately, 
in the context of renewables now, the cost of bulk energy is really beginning to increase and the technology and affordability of renew renewables is becoming far more feasible to now begin to integrate into our developments, whereas previously the, 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 the kilowatt hour costs were quite, um, was quite large disparity, but renewables now are very competitive and we need to, as responsible developers and service providers into that space begin to really practically push for integrating renewable energy into all developments and 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 find a an appropriate integration because it's both it's obviously it's the right thing to do from an environmental perspective and it also makes absolute economical sense and also supports uh, business continuity if you also go into the the on-site storage as well if you are just joining us this evening, I'm in conversation uh, with Kim Bullock and Michael van der Meulen from SBS Group looking at challenges that property developers typically experience. And of course, seeing the love that we're getting on our Facebook page, do keep it coming. If you have any questions or comments, do send them through. Uh, checking in there, sending us some love. Butler Maduna saying, uh, saying he hopes we're well. Uh, he's tuned in and has been very tired of late. I think I think there's just something in the air. Uh, this week is one of those weeks that has taken a lot from all of us. Uh, but it's a Friday, and I think one of the great things about Friday is we'll be able to have an opportunity to get some rest in. So which I do hope that you, you've got some shut-eye time scheduled for this coming weekend. Now, Kim, I think that when do we then look at the um, you know social conscious when it comes to developers, I mean, there's so many different stories that we t typically tend to hear about developers, particularly from the consumer side. I think consumers sometimes think developers don't really have a conscience. They're just there to, to build, you know, the smallest units, get the highest margins. But we know that that isn't the case. Perhaps take us through, uh, you know, wh what happens when you when you're obviously dealing with, uh, you know, different companies and you know that you need to do work that has an impact, not just on the bottom line, but certainly has a positive impact um, for the greater community as well. So um, if you look at SBS, SBS is a triple bottom line business. So yes, we, we focused on, on the people element of, of, of our business and our country at large. Um, as well as profit, obviously we're in it for, for profit, and, and then of course sustainability. And I think we need to look at the planet and look at this generation as well as future generations um, that have to come. So it's very, very important that we look at the, the whole picture. Um, and I think from, from a social responsibility point of view, I think that lives within our DNA as a business. We are very um, conscious of, of the communities that we serve, we have a Build for Better initiative. I'm not, not sure if you've all seen it or heard about it, but Build for Better is a, a, a something that our CEO came up with, which is all about good news stories and about sharing the good news that happens within our country. Um, and it's a platform for other businesses to share their good news stories. It's not really specific to SBS. So, yes, um, um from a, from a CSI point of view and and community wise, it's it's very important that we do that. Does that answer your question? No, it definitely does, and I think it's one of those things that you need to understand that when uh, when when social consciousness and good citizenship is certainly part of the DNA of a company, it does make a difference. And and I think overall, everybody is able to to feel the impact of that going forward. Now, Michael, I, I want us to talk about one of the other risks that uh, and certainly challenges that developers uh, are able to to encounter um, in their line of work, and that's of course the fire risk. Uh, you know, take us through you know the thinking around fire risks in developments. Um, especially from the developer side of things. Sure. So unfortunately in the South African context and particularly more recently in um, KwaZulu-Natal and in Gauteng, we, we all experienced the, the recent um, violence and, and damage to property and so on. And that really began to highlight how vulnerable um, certainly your commercial and industrial property owners and and private property owners are in the 
in 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 an environment where there is not only um, let's call it unrest but also normal fire risk and what that began what that really showed number one it highlighted the inadequate inadequacies of municipal and metropolitan um, uh, bulk uh, pressure in the fire in the fire articulation uh, bulk provision where there simply the, there was no due care taken by the property owners to test the the pressure provision to service the um, the fire hydrants and the um, and the um, their sprinkler systems and the like, and there obviously was significant uh, um, damage and, and implications for property owners who found, um, found that their, their properties were vulnerable. And then those that, for example, didn't have fixed fire protect protection, who did have fixed fire protection, bulk water tanks, such as the ones which um, SPS provide to uh, property owners, um, there were some good success stories where that was where that was available. So it really is essential for for responsible property owners, whether you are a a large property a property owner who has got has got multi tenanted residential or other buildings, to confirm whether there is a need to have fixed fire protection or not, depending on the the particular. Um, uh, uh, the particular use that you currently have, whether it's um, whether it's commercial or industrial, and then to ensure that you you get that assessed and then put it in place, and not to assume that you you are you have sufficient protection, but to always get a a professional to come in and assess it, and then to put in the appropriate um, fixed fire protection. So. You, the, the nice thing about fixed fire protection tanks now when they're integrated into development, they can be um, sized so that you're not only providing um, water for the for <clears throat> an emergency fire event for for, ha for having water provision, but you can also oversize it sufficiently to also include some emergency two or three day uh, backup water for continuity of, of water use, which Kim alluded to er earlier. So if you can... Uh, then you also are able to integrate um, even harv rainwater harvesting and so on into the integrated solution. So it's critical that all end users assess their fire risk from a and whether they need to be um, need to have sprinkler systems embedded into into their buildings, and if they are, to obviously first test that the bulk water provision has the pressure to look after you in the event of a fire a fire event. And in most cases, unfortunately, with the uh, as we alluded to earlier, the aging infrastructure, even our bulk fire mains, which are provided at a municipal or metro level, are not achieving the pressure that, that is needed. And as a result, as a result, the fire protection um, tanks, such as the ones we provide at SPS, um, need to be seriously considered and then integrated into developments. And then what we like to do is not just look at a, a single solution, but provide a more holistic solution where we where we can oversize it to include a sufficient backup water for the rest of the amenity needed toilets, et cetera, um, and, and also integrate even into supplementary water sources like rainwater harvesting. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us this evening. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank Bye you. Thank Thanks you. so much for having us. And enjoy Bye. your weekend, everybody. Thank yeah. you. And that is how we're going to wrap up the edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzama Dungwa Kumalo. It is a Friday. I'll be back on your screens on Monday evening at 7 p.m. You can, of course, look forward to chat in the Home Shoppers show this evening at 8 p.m. from myself and the rest of the Private Property Podcast team. All the best and certainly hope that you're going to have a restful week. We're hoping you're staying home and staying safe.